Welcome to QMI Solutions Introduction to Lean Manufacturing CD. This presentation is structured so that you can follow the guided tour or explore directly to subjects of interest by choosing a menu item above. Click on one of the topics to explore or click next to continue the tour. Lean is a way of thinking that is revolutionizing the operation and management of industry around the world. Lean principles are a central part of modern world-class manufacturing. However, the principles of Lean are more than just a set of improvement tools. They are a philosophy. By valuing the people you work with, providing an environment of continuous improvement, and endlessly striving to eliminate waste, you too can begin the Lean journey. The goals of Lean, including Lean Manufacturing, are to provide products quicker, at less cost, with improved quality and safety, whilst maintaining flexibility to meet the customer's changing requirements. There are a number of Lean tools that we can use when implementing Lean but it is important to use a structured approach to lean thinking. Lean thinking relies on five key principles and each of these principles uses a number of tools. The first principle is customer value. Specify value from the standpoint of the end customer for each product family. A product family is a group of products sharing the same manufacturing process. Each product family represents a value stream. Next, mapping the process. Identify all the steps in the value stream for each product family. Eliminate those steps that do not create value. The third principle is flow. Make the value creating steps occur in tight sequence so the product will flow smoothly toward the customer. Pull. As flow is introduced, let customers pull value from the next upstream activity. The last principle is the relentless pursuit of perfection by eliminating waste. Identify and eliminate waste wherever it is found. Repeat the lean process until a state of perfection is reached in which value is created with no waste. Click on one of the principles to explore or watch as we explain each of the five principles in more detail. The first principle of Lean is to define value, as seen by the customer. After all, businesses survive by providing value to their customers. Lean businesses explicitly define what it is they are providing to their customers, then work to improve the ways this is achieved. The tools presented in this section will help you to discuss and define customer value. Click one of the tools to explore or click Next to continue the tour. Value can only be defined by the person who ultimately uses your product, the final customer. Think about who ultimately pays for your product or service. What exactly is it that they are paying for? Are they paying for the material, the processing and the assembly? Or are they paying for a solution to their problem? They definitely don't think they should pay for many of the wasteful activities that every company performs. Can you provide a solution more efficiently? Is every single action in your company directed towards providing that solution? Thinking in this way points towards new paths with dramatic positive consequences. Specifying value from the viewpoint of the ultimate customer is the founding principle of lean thinking. Thinking about value as defined by the ultimate customer often prompts people into thinking about internal customers. Real value can only be defined by the ultimate customer, but thinking how smaller parts of the system work together to achieve the goal can be of benefit. Is every function in your company delivering its product or service in the best way, so that the next function is operating more efficiently for the ultimate customer? Or are individual departments doing what's best for them without being aware of the effect on the entire system? This leads to thinking about things like inventory levels, batch sizes, response time and quality levels. Think about a common product, a ballpoint pen. 
Exactly what is it about the pen for which the customer is prepared to pay? How many other activities are involved in the design, manufacture, distribution and retail of the product? Do these activities add cost? Do they add value to the product in the eyes of the customer? Once you can identify non-value added activities and how they add cost to products, you understand the concept of value added and non-value added work. Now think about what happens in between each value adding activity. How much time does the product spend waiting? How much packing, unpacking, stacking, unstacking, moving, counting, storing and checking is there? How long would it take if you carried a product through your process from start to finish? Would it be a few minutes or perhaps a day or two? How long does the product actually take to complete? Most companies find a product takes weeks or months from start to finish, even though only a small fraction of that time is actually spent creating value for the customer. If this non-value adding time is eliminated, we can improve our lead time, productivity and quality whilst reducing cost. Where should you target your improvement efforts? Most attention is directed to the value adding time using ever faster, more efficient machines. However, the largest opportunity lies in eliminating non-value added time. With globalized trade, any company around the world can access the best equipment. It's the difference in eliminating non-value added work that is today's advantage and is at the heart of lean. The second lean principle is to map the process. If you don't know where you're going, how will you know if you're going in the right direction? Mapping a path is critical to lean. Lean businesses know where they are going and how they will get there. These tools help companies map, understand and improve their business processes. Click on one of the tools to explore or click next to continue the tour. Value stream mapping is a method of visualizing the flow of value creation as well as the waste in a process. Value stream mapping helps to identify opportunities for improvement as well as communicate the vision for the future. Because the value stream map shows the flow of value, it can be used to identify the bottleneck process, which is where improvements should be focused. Planned improvements are shown in a future state map, showing the benefits of planned changes. For more information on value stream mapping, refer to the resources section at the end of this presentation. A particularly valuable way of focusing improvement efforts is to use constraint-based thinking. The theory of constraints says that there can only be one weakest link in a chain. In the case of a business, there is one point that limits the amount of work which that business can complete. This point is called the bottleneck and is often identified using value stream mapping. Using a five-step method, the theory of constraints focuses improvements to the constraint so they result in the best actual bottom line outcome for the whole business. For more information about Goldratt's theory of constraints, see the resources section at the end of this presentation. Take this sideshow game where every duck wins a prize. However, some prizes are bigger than others and it's not clear which choice leads to which prize. What choice will you make? This is the situation many of us face. We know there are many good ideas, but we can't take advantage of all of them. Where should you start making improvements in your company? After mapping a path of improvements towards a future